Good morning, everybody. Beautiful day out there now, although I did see some white stuff on my deck first thing this morning, which I wasn't too impressed with, and yesterday morning too. Um, will somebody please tell winter it's, it's over, time to go home? Um, for announcements, um, Good Friday is coming up this Friday. We are having a joint service at Cavan for that one, 11 o'clock at Cavan. Uh, for Good Friday. Uh, come on out. Uh, it's going to be a little different than what we normally do in the way of a service. So come on out and just see uh, what we're planning on. And then Easter Sunday will be our normal worship times here. Um, annual meetings are coming up too. Now the Sunday after good, uh, Easter Sunday, so two weeks from today, April 24th, will be Cavan's um, annual meeting. On that day, we are going to switch up worship times, which means on the 24th, we meet at 9.30 here at Northside, and then Cavan meets at 11. So if you come at 11... What's that? The chairlift at Cavan, if anyone needs it. The chairlift at Cavan? Oh yeah, we do have a chairlift at Cavan for accessibility, uh, if you want to come out for a Good Friday. We do have a way to get upstairs into the uh, sanctuary. Uh, as I say, annual meetings. So two weeks from now, we will be meeting at 9.30 and not 11 o'clock. And then our uh, annual meeting will be on May 1st and we'll be back to normal times then. Uh, what else do I have? We have a concert coming up. Getting back into some music, some entertainment. Our own uh, Murray and Sherry and Maria will be singing for us. Uh, it's gonna be a, a nice evening of music. It's all free will donation only, so no cost to come in. Uh, any donations are going to directly to the uh, Seaforth and Area Food Bank. So it's a good cause. Uh, we all know uh, the great music that they put out. We've listened to them many a time. So come on out for an evening of music with uh, Marie and Sherry and uh, Maria. Uh, don't know what else. We got this beautiful picture over here. I don't know if you've been able to come up and take a look at it. There is a lot of material in that picture. It was done by our very own Kay. Painted by her. Um, there's a lot of sayings directly out of the Bible, a lot of the sayings out of Matthew's uh, parables. Uh, take some time to take a look at it. It's been donated to us. So we're gonna leave it up here for a few weeks and then we can find a prominent place to put that somewhere. Uh, we got, we got a few blank walls around here or maybe in the hall where everyone can see it, uh, but somewhere prominent. Uh, so take some time to take a look at this. Uh, like I say, it is a beautiful piece uh, and it'll be here for us for decades to come. Thank you, Kay, for your, the beautiful work that you do and the beautiful music that you bring us. Uh, da -da, that's all I have. Is there anything else we need to share with each other this morning? No? Okay. Well, we're going to get straight into our service uh, with our candle liturgy. We have gathered here, week after week, sharing a common quest for a deeper faith and a deeper experience of the divine. I invite you now to close your eyes and let go of the things that distract or concern you. Listen. The time is drawing near. Jesus is getting ready to enter Jerusalem. How will we greet him? Will we follow him all the way to the cross? <clears throat> the power of Jesus is that he lived what he taught, even when it led to his own death on the cross. He lived with an abiding awareness of God, radiating the light of God in all that he said and did. But that light was too much for the world. There are forces even today, as they were in ancient Judea, that conspired to put that light out. Where do we stand in that drama? What are we willing to risk to follow Jesus? As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and the pain of illness and disease in the world.
Let us pray. Loving God, there are so many choices before us every day. Choices offered by our friends, our families, our culture, our own past. Some of them encourage the well-being of the earth, ourselves and our neighbors. Others destructive. Help us to distinguish between them. May we learn from the choices of Jesus and embody compassion, justice, and inclusion in all that we say and do. Amen. And we're going to sing Voices United 108 throughout these Lenten days and nights. We're going to sing that one all the way through now. 108. In keeping with recent United Church practices in fulfilling the calls to action in the Truth and Reconciliation Report, we in the United Church of Canada recognize the Aboriginal peoples of this land, the Inuit and the Métis, as the original stewards of this land. We are all people of these treaties signed in good faith. Let us live up to the spirit of these treaties in all our undertakings, respecting the land and learning from these peoples. Hosanna, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Blessed is one who comes. Hosanna, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. May the rivers of justice run. Children singing, families dancing. The elders give a shout. Peace in earth, glory in the highest. And the stones cry. Hosanna, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Rain never cease. Not by power, not by might. But it makes for peace. Our opening hymn is 122, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. 122.
Let us continue in prayer. Holy God, your love goes beyond all limits. In the passion of your true Son, you take us beyond our highest ideals and beneath our deepest fears. We thank you for the sweet, sour celebration of Palm Sunday, for both the joy and the tears. Foster in us the desire and the will to follow Jesus without reserve, that we may be led into a peace that holds in times of trouble and into a love that persists far beyond the outer rim of our present understanding. In the name of Jesus, our sweet and dear Savior, amen. Okay, we're gonna now begin our communion service. Has everybody got their communion pack? Everybody got one? Okay, now, take notice there on it. There are two tabs on that. The first tab there opens up and reveals the wafer. You might want to just fold that back there so it's easy to get at at the right time. And the second tab is like opening a coffee creamer. You just pour it back, but be careful. It is grape juice, and I am guarantee if you're wearing white, you're going to spill it on yourself. Murphy's Law will get you on that one. So take note there on those tabs, and we're going to begin our service. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Creator, who is the love we know at our beginning and then without end in our midst and within us. God be with us. Here we find God. God be with you. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We are community, embraced by the mystery of God's love for all creation. We are a community that looks for the light of Christ. Within this dynamic community, we foster connections and experiences that bring meaning to life and to help us face the issues of our day. Together we strive to live with loving hearts, open minds, and loving hands extended to all. We are prepared to be the name of the love of God. Let us pray together. O God, who are our mother and our father, creating in us, nurturing us, teaching us, inspiring us, Defending us, raising us up, sending us out, restoring us from the fall, sustaining us with your love, and endowing us with fruit and abundance. Grant us all this to be your wisdom and strength, so that we may grow in our inheritance as your children and faithful stewards of your creation. We confess our shortcomings to God our need for reconciliation, and our need for renewal that comes through God's grace. We know that God's love is infinite, so we seek this forgiveness with confidence. We now pray together, loving and honoring God. Forgive us for we have failed to support one another and to be what we claim to be. Forgive us. Forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourselves. God the Creator brings new life, forgives and redeems each and every one of us. Take hold of this forgiveness and live your life in the Spirit of Christ Jesus. Amen. God be with you. Open your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to praise you, O God, for you are the ground of our being, 
in whom we live and move. At the beginning, you created the elements from which we and all creatures have evolved. Galaxies and planets, our sun, the earth and moon, plants and animals, individuals and nations, every substance and spirit. You gave us You gave us the power to acquire the secrets of our Mother Earth, to honor her and care for her as she cares for us. We have done this and more, also misusing our creative powers. But you continue to love us, calling us back to what you created us for, offering us infinite possibilities. And so we join with creation that praises you in every time and place. We take this bread and this wine and, and pray that by your word and spirit, we who eat and drink may know a closer experience to your presence. On the night before Jesus died, he shared a meal with his friends. And at the meal, he took the bread and he blessed it. And he gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this always in memory of me. And likewise, after the meal, he took the cup. And when he blessed it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. To God be the glory forever. Amen. We who are many share one body. For we all share in one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us share this holy sacrament, remembering that Jesus died for us, and feed on him in our hearts with faith and thanksgiving. Loving God, you have created all humanity in your image and likeness, and have revealed your plan and purpose in calling us your friends and family. As we have shared this holy meal, inspire our hearts to see every man, woman, and child given the dignity and value which is your purpose and your gift. O oh God, strengthen us. We'll now continue with a prayer of illumination. Calm us now, O Lord, into the quietness that heals and listens. Open wounded hearts to the balm of your word. Speak to us in clear tones that we might feel our spirits leap for joy and skip with hope as your resurrection witness. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Luke. After Jesus said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples ahead, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, 
And as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ridden, ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked him, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs him. They brought, they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road went down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they kept quiet, the stones will cry it out. The Gospel of Christ. Hear what these ancient words are saying to us today. And I think we're going to sing 127. Right on, right on in majesty. 127. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. Speak, O Lord, for your people are listening. Well, today is Palm Sunday, or Passion Sunday is known in some churches, and it is one of the big festivals in the Christian year. But that brings to, brings to mind a question that I have to ask. What does this day really signify in the terms of the everyday life of a Christian? I think it is a simple reminder of just how fickle human beings can be, how we can shout Hosanna one day and a few days later cry out, crucify him, crucify him, because that is all part of the Holy Week story, the passion of Jesus Christ. We need to remember that Palm Sunday is here to remind us that we do have a choice to make. We have to make a decision about Jesus and Jesus' claim on our lives. When Jesus came into Jerusalem that day long ago, he made it abundantly clear that yes, he was God's Messiah. There was no doubt about it. And from that moment on until now, people have had to make a decision. Are we for him or are we against him? Will we accept him or will we reject him? 
That choice is yours and mine to make. And depending on what we decide what can be the most important decision in our lives. It can be an important turning point in our lives. But there are always those voices out there that like to eliminate a matter of decision in Christianity. There's something about human nature that really doesn't like to decide yes or no at the moment. We don't want to commit ourselves one way or the other. Society tells us it's best if you sit on the fence and then you can go whatever way the popular opinion is going that day. Society tells us has made a, vote, a, a virtue about of openness and neutrality. That we forget that it's some of the fundamental choices in our lives that shapes our lives, and for that matter, the life to come. The simple fact is, we cannot stay neutral on every issue, especially the issue of Jesus Christ. We have to make a decision. Are we for him? Are we against him? Is God real or is God not? Was Jesus a psychopathic fool? Or did he know just how to live life at its best, how it should be lived? You know, I do have to have some sympathy for Pontius Pilate in our uh, Jesus' passion, especially on this issue, because he tried as hard as anyone in history to try to avoid making a decision about that troublesome carpenter from Nazareth. Accepting Jesus as the Son of God that was not possible in, in Pilate's books, no. But crucifying a seemingly innocent man, that was equally distasteful for him. Romans, after all, they liked to profess to be a nation of justice, where justice meant something. Pilate tried to, to free Jesus, but the crowd was stirred up, calling for his execution. They called out, crucify him, crucify him. You could almost see Pilate wondering why it fell to him to make that decision as to whether to crucify an innocent man. Why couldn't he just wash his hands of the whole affair? But even though Pilate was governor, his word was the law. He could have easily set him free. There was Pilate, <coughs> the governor. He could have set uh, Jesus free, this carpenter from Nazareth. Pilate was confronted with an issue that he could not be neutral on. He couldn't get around it. Neutrality was not an option for him. Yes, he wanted to free the man, but the crowd was calling for his head. And sometimes he had to keep the peace. Sometimes to keep a population under control, it's expedient sometimes to follow the wishes of the crowd. But Palm Sunday leaves us with that issue. It, conf it confronts us with that reality that we do have to make a choice. Every day, after all, we're faced with making choices. Neutrality is not always an option for us, as much as we may, we may want it to be. As individuals, we have to make a choice every day. Do I stay sober or do I go out and get drunk? Do I want to be honest in my dealings or do I want to cheat people? Do I want to live a life for God or do I want to live a life for myself only? Decisions every day we have to choose on. We can't take a neutral road on. The same necessity of choice confronts us even as a nation. We can no longer be neutral about the destruction of our natural resources or the shortage of energy or issues of human rights for all citizens, or climate change, or those explosive situations in the Ukraine or Middle East where war seems to be the, the thing of the day. These are realities that we can no more wash our hands of than Pilate could in those days of old. The day, this day confronts us with a choice that we have to make. Are we for Jesus or are we against Jesus? Let's take a look at the issues of being against Jesus. Consider those people on that first Palm Sunday who chose not to accept Jesus as the Christ. For many people then, even now, Jesus is simply not the kind of Messiah that we want. The fulfillment did not live up to the promise. People wanted a warrior Messiah back then, one who would rise up, defeat the Romans. People then, as well as today, respect the strength a strong leader. Jesus simply was not the Messiah that they expected the Messiah they wanted. They wanted a king who would justify their lifestyles, oh, maybe crush their enemies, maybe vindicate their selfishness or confer confirm their prejudices. By comparison, most of those kingly, the kingly entrance of Jesus into that royal city was anything but a pompous affair. It was a shabby affair, if anything. Instead of an army, it was followed by a ragged trail of peasants. Instead of generals and courtiers, there was a handful of ordinary disciples. 
Instead of a warrior king, it was a humble man riding on a donkey. A donkey, a symbol of peace. Instead of riding through streets lined with gold, the streets were lined with leaves and people's clothing. Jesus' whole entrance into Jerusalem that first Palm Sunday was a challenge to the world. Jesus' entrance made it clear that God's way is not the world's way. It said that love and not hatred is what God most desires and that God's power and grace can save us, not human strength and wisdom. Human strength is fleeting at best, here today, gone tomorrow. The Gospel writers tell us, tells us that Jesus cried over the city because of the unwillingness of the people to choose life over death. And I believe that God still cries over the conflicts in this broken world, conflict between the rich and the poor, conflict between peoples of different race or ethnic backgrounds, conflicts of those who worship the living God in different ways. Systemic racism is built right into the very fabric of our society. There are groups that profess inclusiveness, but in the process end up being exclusive as they omit certain groups of people. And I can tell you personally, the United Church of Canada is just as guilty of this as any other group in society. Perhaps the most telling symbol of the world, of our brokenness and our failure to recognize Jesus as the Christ, is a very church building. Take a look at that whole Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. It's built over the traditional site of cavalry, over the Garden of the Resurrection. And it stands today only because it's held up by ugly scaffolding that supports its walls. That church is owned jointly by the Abyssinians, the Armenians, the Coptics, the Greek Orthodox, the Syrian Orthodox, and the Roman Catholics. And the priests of these various traditions hardly ever talk to each other. Each one has their own communion, preserves its own chapel, conducts its own ceremonies, and no agreement can be reached amongst them as to how to repair the greater building. Nowhere in the world is there a more vivid symbol of the brokenness of Christ's body and the brokenness of the world that it's chosen to reject the love of God in Jesus. But let's take a look at the other side. Those who choose to receive Christ. For those who chose to receive Christ as the Savior on that day long ago, it was a decision that transformed their lives. Look at Zacharias, who mishandled the money, a money changer. There was James and John who mishandled their desire for recognition and power. A woman named Mary. There was Peter who in the moment of weakness denied his best friend three times. What actually happened to change their lives? You might say that Jesus Christ, through Jesus, in Jesus Christ, they saw themselves more clearly than they ever saw before. In Jesus, they saw possibilities of what it means to be truly human. In Jesus, they saw the love that forgives their past mistakes and a transforming power that makes them new again. So they made the choice. They chose to let Jesus be their savior, the savior of their sinful lives and turn their lives around. They chose to let Jesus be the Lord of all. There's an interesting story I came across when preparing for this ser sermon. It's a pastor that was sent to a spiritually dead town in Oklahoma, just a small little no-name town. The pastor was told that church is spiritually dead. In his first week, he called on as many members of the congregation as possible, inviting them out for the first Sunday service. His efforts failed. This first Sunday, he had three people out there. So the pastor realized, yeah, this church is spiritually dead. So he takes a different tact on it. He places an ad in a local paper saying, this church is dead, so we're going to give it a decent Christian burial. The funeral for the church will be at 2 p.m. next Sunday. Surprisingly, the whole community came out, morbidly curious, just to see what he was talking about. At the front, in front of the pulpit there, was a coffin, decorated out with flowers. A eulogy was, sent, was uh, given, and then the pastor invited everybody to come forward, walk by the casket there, and give their final respects there to the dead church. Everybody lined up and they came up, they looked into the coffin and then they bowed their heads sheepishly and walked off. You see, inside that coffin was a mirror, balanced at just the right angle, so the second they looked in, they saw themselves. They saw their own reflection as perhaps they never saw it before. That 
still is what happens when human beings are allow the living Christ to confront them in their sinful brokenness. Today, Palm Sunday is a day that calls on us to make that choice, to receive God's Christ, to let our lives be whole again by the power of God, or to deny that saving grace that Christ offers to us all. As we begin our Holy Week, our final march to the cross, can we truly say in our hearts, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The choice is up to each and every one of us to make. Choose wisely. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Please give us grace, loving God, to pray with our hearts as well as our lips, and to serve you with our deeds as well as our prayers. In places where the church celebrates with joy today, where it laughs with little children and praises with elderly saints, till hosannas overflow from every loving heart, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In places where the church gathers in sorrow or fear today, weeping with Christ Jesus for the cross that, he must be, that must be carried in the face of misunderstanding and abuse, may your kingdom come. It will be done on earth as in heaven. In places where ordinary people are disillusioned with that greed and injustice that wants the poor and the weak to be blamed for the deprivations that inflict them, your kingdom come. In places where people are at their wit's end, angry or frightened, ready to strike out violently at those around them, or falling into despair and planning to take their own lives, your kingdom come. In places where there are small hopes begging to be kept alive, programs of compassion needing to be supported, and the beginnings of faith requiring recognition and encouragement, your kingdom come. It will be done on earth as in heaven. God of Christ Jesus and our God, enable each of us to enter into a fellowship of the Spirit of Christ, that our personal happiness and suffering may not be wasted, but dedicated to your infinite purpose, which are often baffling, but always loving. Today, we especially hold in our prayers the people of the Ukraine as they continue to fight for their freedom Send them, strengthen them that they may continue this fight and lead them to victory. We pray for the family of Carolyn Somerville, who was laid to rest this past Friday. Send the spirit of comfort to the family as they deal with the loss of Carolyn. We pray for the family of Irene Youngblood, who died in a tragic accident this past Friday. A good friend and a woman I married here just this past summer. Send your spirit of comfort upon them as they deal with this tragedy that came upon them without warning. And we pray for Pastor Brian from Edmondville, who's continuing to fight COVID. Send your spirit of strength and healing upon him, that he may come back and continue the work that you would have him do. And we pray now for those that we name now in the silence of our hearts, and those whose names are known to you alone, O Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. And now I invite you all to join in the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, a prayer over the offerings that you left on your way in. O Lord, may these gifts be used to bring healing, wholeness, and joy to God's world that God so dearly loves. 
Amen. And we're going to close out with hymn 149, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, 149. And now, that peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God's total and inclusive love, shown to us when he sent his son Jesus to us to put us into a position where we have to make a choice. Are we for God or not? And that same Jesus is still confronting us even today with that decision, but he is saving each and every life that confesses him. And the blessing of God, the creator, the sustainer, and the redeemer, be with you all, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.